thank you, Father, because indeed we step into a time of authority and the authority you have given to us will not be stolen in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Um, it is good to see everyone back in class. Um, once again, if you have anybody that is supposed to be here that is not here, I want you to send them the link. Anyone you know that will be blessed by Authority University, um, I want you to reach out to them and tell them to be here. Um, Aquila, absolutely. Yeah, you, you remember yesterday we talked about Authority and the last point um, that we made was that Authority is about royalty being a royal so i'm just following the curriculum that god has given me thank you very much guys thank you so much Wachuka, um shiro uh, everyone thank you thank you uh, very much for the compliments um it is my joy to appear before you all every evening and to bring the word of the lord to you i hope our sound is good today uh are we good media Fantastic. I don't want anyone to miss out on anything. Praise God. So how are you all doing? How has Authority University been for you? I want you to just type in the comment section and let me know um, how it has been for you. How have you been blessed? Um, what have you received? What decisions are you going to make differently because of the things that we have said here? Um, how are you going to build your lives and your home differently because of the things you have learned at Authority University? Come on, somebody, encourage me. I need to know that I am doing a good job and that um, God is indeed moving in your lives. So, identity revealing, praise God, life changing. Uh, beautiful apostle, yes, fantastic. I'm glad that this was made revealed to you. <laughs> Uh, someone says she feels strengthened. I'm glad to hear that, Lola. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Mind blowing. Yes, but can you tell me some of the things? Um, authoritative teaching, words of eternal life. I am glad. So, but what have you learned? Experience has just been out of this world. It's a season. May the word not, may the word fall on fertile ground. Amen. Um, deep revelation to evolve uh okay okay fantastic fantastic i am happy to hear all of this i'm happy to hear all of this okay great great so um in the early hours of this morning um i made a decision uh ty says courage praise god empowerment consecration uh i have been blessed and left wanting for more I definitely want to learn and keep doing this. Praise Jesus. Um, declaring things that I see. Media, please stay with me. I need to read the comments. Uh, I need to shine my light. I've learned the guard to guard my toe and maintain its boundaries. Um, I need to shine my light to exercise my authority. Understood, be fruitful and multiplying. Yesterday's session compared me to pray my light to shine. Courage to only move as a royalty. Yes, the very fact that I have a choice. Yes, that's part of the power you have been given. Choice. Solomon had authority to build temples, but he couldn't govern his appetite. Um, and so we have to govern our appetite if we we'll preserve our authority. Yes, I came into a new understanding of authority beyond spiritual authority. Great. Okay, it takes the shining of my light to command influence. Image before authority, image matters. Yes, submission gives me authority. Yes, one zero. How you think determines the authority level that you carry. Yes. Um, okay, great, great. I see that everyone is right here with me and we're moving. Remember, send a link to your friends. Mastery is key. I love that point. I also love that point, actually. Mastery is key. So send a link to your friends, your family. Um, and everyone that you believe should learn. Now, the thing I love about what, the God, what God does with us when I'm teaching is that it is not only, um, so God says teach on authority and then I see God breaking into different areas, into different streams, into different places. I see God touching issues that I didn't think we would cover um, in the teaching. So it is always, 
um, a joy for me when I see the Lord going into all these areas. So this class is for everyone. Someone asked me, is it for only women? I was like, no, 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 no. This class is for everybody. It's not for just women. So make sure you invite the men and everyone because the word of God is not male. It's not female. The word of God is the word of God. And the word of God is able to impact lives um, all over the world. So today we have quite a bit to cover. Um, remember our curriculum, we have an eight-part module of which, by the way, I made a decision um, that I'm going to open up the Authority University recordings for everyone. Now, it may be for a period of time, it may be forever, I don't know, but I want you guys to just get everything and I want you to learn everything. So what my media team is doing is that they are breaking it down into parts that you can take easily so into the different modules so when you then go um, on youtube what you're going to find at the end of the day is like an eight part um series on authority that's what you will have yes hallelujah praise god but you see now here's the thing though people knowing that you have it you may not watch it so i'm telling you you're not going to have it forever so um, in the period that it's going to be on YouTube, I want you to make sure you maximize it. So oh, I'm saying to you now, maximize it. Because the next time you're going to see Authority University, Authority University would have gone to Harvard, cleaned up, you know. It's going to be a whole course with manuals, with workbooks, with lessons, with community managers. It's going to be a whole school. So um, while you have this particular set of teachings, make sure you maximize them, okay? I'm doing it because you asked, so make sure you maximize them. All right, God bless you. God bless you. I'm glad. I'm glad you're happy, and I'm glad that some people are going to go over every single material. Mm -hmm. Okay, God bless you. So now let's delve into today. Somebody sent me a message on Instagram yesterday and said, Apostle, please, I don't understand. How is Authority University free? I said, I don't know either. <laughs> but yeah, but I, I do believe that there are people here who are taking back things that they've lost and God wants it because of you. So please maximize the material. We are going to jump right into... So in our module, we had meaning of authority, module one, authority frameworks, number two, the authority versus power dynamics, number three, authority trade in the spirit realm, number four, acquiring territorial authority, number five, mastering occupancy, number six, um, the three satanic models um, of authority, number seven, and number eight, building an effective intelligence network. So... What we're about to cover today by the grace and speed of the Holy Spirit is authority trade in the spirit realm all the way down to building an effective intelligence network, which is actually five modules. So I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do it because I'm not available tomorrow evening. So we're going to do it. Um, I would love to go over the things that we have done before, but I can't. So what I will say to you if you're joining us for the first time is just make sure that you go over the videos it's going to be available media when are they going to have the videos available tomorrow evening that's a long time though okay well they said tomorrow evening so i guess you can all just gather <laughs> tomorrow evening and watch the videos but he says tomorrow evening i can't do too much um, but if you are in media, you want to help me, you want to join my team to make sure these things move faster, please feel free, send me a message and join so that these things don't have to take so much time. Okay. Ah, somebody said that seven dimensions of light, Monifa. Hey, you are hungry, Oliver Twist. I can't teach that. Let's finish our curriculum first now, Monifa. Hmm? All right. So we'll finish authority frameworks. Let us go. Now, there's a key scripture that I want us to keep our eyes on. And this scripture is going to be the foundation of everything that we're going to do from module 4 up to module 8. It's a scripture in Luke 19, 19 from verse 11 to 17. Luke 19, 11 to 17. Okay, if you have your Bibles, please open it. If you don't have your Bible, grab your Bible. If you don't have the physical Bible, go online. But please read the scriptures along with me. Luke 19, 11 to 17. Are we ready? Good. It says, And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable 
because he was near to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear after all this younger, I have to wear the glasses. And so because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear, he said, therefore, um, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants. Okay, sorry, one second. Then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound had gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well done, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little have thou authority over ten cities. So this is a parable that all of us know. This parable also exists in Matthew, I believe. And in Matthew, there's a bit of variance between the way it is told um, here in Luke and the way it is told in Matthew. The way it is told in Luke is only that the master gave them, um, if you gain um, five more, he would, I think he gave you five more or something like that. Whatever you gained, he multiplied it. But here, whatever you gained, he gave you authority over cities. And so this whole parable is speaking about the fact that a master went, he was about to go because the Bible says he needed to gain a kingdom for himself. So he had to leave. But in leaving, what he did was that he left servants um, to represent him in the land. But the people in the land were like, no, we're not going to have this man reign over us. Now, what did that mean? That means whatever the talents were, was that he gave to his servants was talents for leadership and rulership and something that basically positioned them as his representatives. Do you understand? In the land. So the people said, we will not have him reign over us because while the servants were there and with whatever gifts or talents he gave to them, it made them men of authority that made the people say, no, we can see you are clear representatives of this guy. We don't want him to reign over us. So we're, gonna, we're going to fight against you. Now, let us go um, right quickly. Now, when you look at these things, one of the things it said in verse 11, it says, and as they heard these things, he added and spoke a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Now, these people thought that the, the kingdom of God um, was just going to appear because what had happened before these verses was that Jesus had gone into the house of Zacchaeus, I think, and he had said to him, you know, give half of your um, what you own to the poor and you know all of this is that happened and Jesus said oh today salvation has come to this house and today you have become um, a son of David a part a son of Abraham you have now become part of this covenant so the people when they heard these things they thought wow the kingdom of God is about to appear so here is Jesus saying to them no it doesn't happen like that simply because I said today the kingdom of God has come to this house. Or so simply because I said, oh, you know, today he's going to be a son of Abraham doesn't mean that this is how the kingdom was, is going to appear. So Jesus was trying to teach them how kingdom is born, the process of the establishment of the kingdom. This is why Jesus told them this parable. And I need you to stay with me because this is the anchor scripture for all the other modules we're going to cover. So Jesus was teaching them that the process of the kingdom of this world becoming the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ is that those gifts that were given to the people they were, and for them to learn how to do business in the spirit, that those 10 talents <clears throat> translated into the authority that was going to enable the kingdom to be established. So it wasn't just because the master gave them talent, so the kingdom has come. But the people needed to learn how to do business with the talent, um, and then that is how a kingdom is born. So you then begin to realize that the reason why there is this entire conversation about authority is because there is a kingdom that God is seeking to establish. And I need you to stay with me, because there is a way that 
we reduce the talents, the gifts, and the graces of God to our domestic problems, our domestic issues. There is a way the kingdom of God and the affairs of the kingdom is reduced to, oh, I need money, I need a child, I need um, a business, you know, I need to get this, I need my documentation, I need my this, you know. The kingdom sometimes has been reduced to the needs of broken humanity or the needs that have arisen by the brokenness of our humanity. But the kingdom of God is bigger than that the kingdom of God is much more than that. The Bible says that the reason why he gave them these talents and he left, it says, so that he might acquire a kingdom for himself. Now, if the master was so desperate to have a kingdom, why did he leave? Because the truth is, like I said to you people, authority is gained when authority is tested. It's that simple. So Adam and Eve could not gain the authority that they needed to reign and rule over all of God's creation until they had been tested and they had proven that they were obedient to the ways of God who gave them the power on the inside of them. So the master had to leave and the servants had to be tested. And they, in their testing, they then established their authority. And in establishing their authority, his kingdom is built and established. And, um, I, and in the establishing of the kingdom, what he then has is not just um, power in territories, but what he then has are sons that can be trusted. So you need to understand how God works when God is giving authority to a man. God will feed you with something little that you have, and then God steps away and tests you and looks at how you process what he has given to you. And so you understand that I did not wake up overnight and, you know, just overnight I just you know, had the grace to do all the things that I do as an apostle. So God had already called me, saved me, anointed me, separated me, designated me, gifted me, graced me to do the things that I'm doing. But God steps away. And when I say steps away, I don't mean the spirit of God leaves you. But God makes room for you to exercise your authority through the risk that you take, through the services that you give to the kingdom, through the ways that you push through boundaries. And then in pushing through, and whether it's in faith, it's in fear, whatever the case may be, but determining to grow and multiply the kingdom, God steps back and watches you do that. As I do that, what I'm doing is that I am growing in authority and even the heavens begin to testify that indeed this one is the Lord's apostle. We look at the way she would take her time to study. We look at the fact that she looks at the scripture and says, hey, these are the things that an apostle is supposed to do. Okay, I believe that God has given me this gift. The Bible says when he ascended, he gave gifts unto men. So he has given me this gift. However, the fact that he has given it to me, it does not translate automatically to authority. I have the power, but I don't have the authority. But I'm going to have the authority to reign, to rule, and establish an as apostle when I do all that I need to do to grow in the apostolic. So I will study, I will pray, I would take risk, I would groom people, I would seek for what um, the standard of the kingdom, what the word of the Lord says, I will take the time to build unity and collaboration in the church, I will not be part of disintegration and separation, I will make sure I follow peace with all men, I will stretch myself to find healing, um, to work miracles, signs and wonders, when God tells me to go into territories, I will get up and go, no matter how foolish it looks, no matter how crazy I sound, I will believe God for the wealth of nations to establish the destiny of nations all of these things as i do them what is happening is that i am growing in grace i'm growing in strength i'm entering into mastery and i am gaining authority in the realm of the spirit is somebody still with me so the master left to make room for the people through exercise to gain authority through exercise okay now, also, when you look at the numbers from Matthew and Luke, you realize that there's a foundational revelation in the details. Now, the Bible says that um, God gave gifts unto them. And if you look at the gifts, it says 10, 5, 2, and 1. 10, 5, 2, and 1. The number 10 represents humanity. The number 5 represents grace. The number 2 represents partnership. And the number 1 represents God. So, Humanity receives grace to partner with God. 10, 5, 2, 
one, humanity receives grace to partner with God. So this was exactly what happened because when the master was going to go, what he did was he, that he gave them grace for partnership. That's really what authority is. Authority is really the grace that you receive from God so that you, unqualified, broken human, can partner with God on the level of the kingdom. So I need to bring authority into context. Authority is not some high-flying capacity to do as you please. Authority works only within the governmental structure of God's kingdom. Authority works only when a man is rightly situated in the midst of God's agenda. Authority is not given, neither is it preserved for a man that heaven cannot trust will consistently partner with him. So this parable is all about humanity receiving grace to partner with God. That's how authority is born. You want to grow your authority in any area, simply go back to something that God wants to do and partner with God in culture, in values, in sacrifice, in persistence, partner with God in service, and then you will realize that as you partner with God to do all that is needed to establish that thing that God desires, you begin to grow in authority in that particular area. The reason why many people have money but they don't have authority is because they sought after the money, but they never sought after the will of God in money. And so you gain money, but you don't gain authority. You gain husband but you don't gain authority in marriage now because what many people went after was to gain a wife and to gain a husband for the purpose of status for the purpose of beautiful instagram posts to pepper your enemies and show them that you too you can have a spouse you know but not many people sought after the will of god to say father there is a reason why you created man you created woman and you asked both of them to be together this is what I'm seeking for. So against all odds and against every other cultural, um, limited cultural perspective, I want to know you. I want to see you. I want to bring back the glory of man and woman. And so when you come into that place, there is a price to pay and you begin to pay the price because you want to partner with God. In the midst of paying the price, whatever it may be, humility, understanding, revelation, persistence, kindness, truth, grace, you begin to pay the price. And as you pay the price, you then realize that something is happening to you. You start to gain authority. People may come to you about their marital issues and you just have revelation to say, this is what you ought to do. And then the chain is broken. Why? Because you gained authority authority through the things that you suffered the bible spoke about jesus how god has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name he says because why because jesus through the things that he suffered he lent obedience and then god has highly exalted him so you then realize that there is a chain of connection onto high exaltation the chain of connection is the things you suffer the obedience that you come into through suffering and then high exaltation which is authority he says he has given a name that is high, that is um high that is above every other name that at the mention of the name of jesus every name was bow and every tongue must confess so the bible says jesus christ he endured hardship he persevered he suffered many things because he entered into the frame of humanity but he that knew no sin was made sin and he died yet on the cross he did not complain and then the next phase was that in the midst of his suffering jesus took it as opportunities to learn how to obey god you need to understand what i'm saying so here is jesus wanting to deliver to us authority that cannot be contested but for him to do that he needed to gain the authority not because he was in god he was god in all of eternity but he needed to gain the authority within the context of humanity so he had to come as a human and within humanity he learnt, he suffered and learned obedience the bible says he learned obedience so jesus went to the school of obedience the way you are going to the university of authority he went to the school 
full of obedience because obedience does not happen supernaturally even if you are God. You have to learn it, how to subject yourself and how to agree with God's divine standards because your humanity will always fight against his divinity. So you then begin to learn how to master divine life in the midst of broken humanity. So this was what Jesus learned. He mastered it. So when he woke up in the morning and humanity says, Chai, this Mary Magdalene is fine. No, and you know you have removed all the demons from her. So you can justify it. Now your wedding will trend on Instagram. You understand? Jesus had to learn obedience and to say to himself, I did not come to marry a Magdalene Magdalene. I came to marry the whole world. So because of all the people in the world that I will save, I would give this up so that I may gain all of this. So Jesus began to learn how to keep his mind on the big picture. He began to learn the big picture, the big scale of what he was called to do. So in the midst of all of that, there are times when, you know, he's on earth, he sees all the people following him and ah, I can't, this crowd, there's one or two things I will say now, they will make me their king. And because I know I have power, Jesus could part see in his time he walked on water. So Jesus could have been such a powerful king on earth. But the Bible says he learned obedience. So for every time that humanity we want to show up to tell him he will partner with God. He had grace to partner with God. In partnering with God, he began to master until he got to the point where he was fully in obedience. So that even though he was flogged, um, and is it 36 stripes of, uh, of the whip? And even though he was crucified, he learned, he mastered obedience to God. And in the mastery of obedience, Jesus gained such great authority that when he went into hell, the camp of Satan, even though he died as a man that carries sin on the inside of him, yet he came with the entire force of heaven. And the Bible says how he defeated Satan in his territory and how he came out victorious, collected the keys to life and death. How how did he gain this authority? How did he gain this power? Was because he mastered obedience. Listen to me. Do not believe any gospel that makes you believe that grace gives you the liberty to sin. Grace gives you the liberty to walk in disobedience. Hear me. Any gospel that preaches that to you is from the pits of hell. And the plan of that teaching is to make sure you never arrive at authority. Grace is given so that you may have the strength to come into obedience. Grace is given so that you may have the capacity to master obedience. Grace is given so that in the midst of your temptations, you will know how to stay true to the big picture. Grace is given so that no matter what you face and no matter what faces you, you have the ability to stay true to the ways of God because it is a man that carries the image and the likeness of God that is the man that can carry God's authority. Do you understand me? Grace is given. Grace is given. So it says he gave them 10, gave them 5, gave them 2, gave them 1. Humanity receiving grace to partner with God. Please write that down. Humanity receiving grace to partner with God. And I want you to say to yourself, my humanity receives grace to partner with God. Everything on the inside of me that is human, that is broken, that has failed, that has been hurt, that has been bruised, that wants to be selfish and greedy, everything on the inside of me that does not want to partner with God on the level of royalty, on the level of governance, everything on the inside of me that does not want to exercise the power of choice to choose God, to choose life, to shun death, I declare that my humanity receives grace to partner with God. You are here. I see somebody, as soon as I close my eye, I saw someone, a man. You've been running away from God. You know that God has called you. You know that his hand was upon your life. You have experienced grace back to back, but you have said to yourself, ah, I can't do this. But today, I want you to pray for yourself and to say, my humanity receives grace to partner with God. I will not run away from the Lord. I will not run away from my calling. I will not run away from my assignment. I will not deviate from the path of obedience. I will not reduce the scale of consecration that God has given to me. Today, my humanity receives grace to partner with God. I see somebody on this call, 
God has called you to step up the ministry he has given to you. And God has told you it is time to break out and to break forth. But you are so afraid. What will people say? How would it look? How would I manage the logistics? How would I handle it? Today, declare upon yourself, my humanity receives grace to partner with God. Your next level of authority is dependent on your next level of obedience. Your next level of authority is dependent on your next level of willingness to risk yourself and risk your former success. Your next level of authority is dependent on your ability to shun your previous success and shun your previous name and take a risk because God is commanding. Declare it over yourself. My humanity receives grace to partner with God. This is how you grow in authority. This is how you grow in authority. I hope you are with me. Okay. So, Kurama saved the Inge de Melecosha Valica Barres Sotevegia. Saconte Mila Aclande de Velonto is Claca te Vente Velevida Vavale Baruske in Teveleca. Jesus, you are the chief chef. In this kitchen of authority, you are the one cooking the meal. You are the one stirring the pot. You are the one presenting and serving at the table. You are the diet in itself and you are the meal in itself. So Jesus, I just give you this stage of this journey, Lord. And Jesus, I just ask you that you feed your people that which they need to become fat in the realm of the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Take the teaching from my hand, Holy Spirit, and become the teacher and become the one that serves the table according to the needs of their people in Jesus name amen thank you Holy Spirit Jesus is the final authority Jesus is the authority that we have everything that the servants have had it was because the master gave it to them okay the master gave it to them now there are four things I want you to note about how authority works remember we are on the topic of authority trade in the spirit realm we haven't gotten there or just four things before we get into authority trade. Based on that scripture, four things you need to note. Number one, authority is not without a purpose. Number one, there is a purpose. There's a foundational reason why God gives authority. The same way we talked about man and we talked about why God would give man authority. You understand? And I said to you that God did not make the man to be there as a big bully or to be there so that he can say, listen, I'm the man here. Yeah. No, 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 no. There is always a purpose for every authority that God gives to a person or to a people, to a generation, to a system, to a time. Authority is not without a purpose. Number two, authority is not without a cause. There is always a cause for which God gives authority. So the purpose is the foundational thing that God is seeking to achieve. The cause is the way he will achieve it. So there is a path, there is a cause that God has in mind when he gives authority. Number three, authority is not without agents. There is always an agent of authority. You know, so even though the master had a purpose and the master had a cause, but he needed agents. So God um, the master gave his servants, so the servants became the agents of authority. Now, whenever you are an agent of authority, never mistake um, your office in your agency to be the sovereign authority. Never mistake it. You are an agent. You are not the sovereign one. You, you merely have designated authority, but you are not the sovereign one. Now, many people begin to fail and to fall when they get to that point. Saul began to lose his authority the moment he began to think, oh, I'm the sovereign one. I can do as I please. God says to him, do not kill. I'm um, kill all of the Amalekites. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I can keep this. I can keep that. And the, the point where your humanity begins to argue with God's sovereignty is at the point of intelligence. I, I need you to understand what I'm saying. The tree that they ate that brought them to death was the tree of knowledge. The tree they ate that bled them to death was the tree of knowledge. Write it down. Knowledge. Knowledge is good, but the Bible says knowledge puffs up. And pride is a form of arrogance against God. And the Bible says he resists the proud. So there is something about knowledge that has the capacity to make you to begin to argue with God. If you see people who are atheists, they are atheists on the foundation of how can there be a God? And they have all their arguments carefully lined up. It's called knowledge. So there's a blessing of knowledge. And there's a 
the danger of knowledge. Now, it depends on the knowledge because the Bible speaks in Isaiah 11, the seven spirits of God. It was part of the things I was hoping to teach you people, but maybe we'll make that an entire series in its, on its own, the seven spirits of God. Now, part of the spirit, the seven, the operation of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of knowledge. Now, there's a spirit of knowledge and there is also the knowledge of good and evil. Why is there a spirit of knowledge? Because spirits dwell within realms. And there is a realm where knowledge dwells. Now, even within realms, you see, when Satan fell and Lucifer fell, it was a spiritual fall that had a physical effect. So the fall of Lucifer is in many realms. And so even in the realm of knowledge, there is also the fight and argument for who is Lord. So within the realm of knowledge, God has got his own gatekeeper, maybe a cherub that guards that realm. There, but then even within that realm, there is also satanic agents that seek to corrupt, pervert. And so they deliver knowledge to the sons of God, to the sons of men, but knowledge that can corrupt and pervert them. So you need to understand that what happened to Adam and Eve wasn't that God did not want them to know. What happened was a backdoor entrance into a realm and the gate you pass into a realm determines whether or not you have authority in that realm or if you are a servant to that realm. So because they passed a backdoor of disobedience within time, they became servants to the realm of knowledge. But when we stay in life, eating the tree of life, we will partner with the dimension of God who is the Lord over knowledge realm. But we do not die because we pass the front door of obedience. So we become masters over that realm as opposed to servants to that realm. So there's a way knowledge can kill you, but knowledge can also build you up depending on where you passed in. So this is the reason why you should not take the back door of divination, which is what is sold today as modern day religion. So many people are being taught and many people are, you know, entering into spirit realm, entering meditation, entering yoga, you know, spirit of earth, modern nature. They are doing all kinds of modern day religion and they are actually going into the spirit realm. They take ayahuasca, they say they have visions and all of that. Yes, they do see. But the question is, what did you see? Who did you encounter? It wasn't Jesus. There are demonic entities that masquerade themselves as spirits of light and they bring messages to you that break you, that steal your freedom and liberty from you. It doesn't give you any form of authority in any sort. You can't re rebuke any demon. You can't rebuke any sickness. You become subject and you become a slave to that realm. So you have to be careful. It's not everything I read. It's not every book I'm seeking to know. People have said to me, have you read the book of Enoch? Have you read the book of this? Have you read the scrolls of that? I don't want to read those scrolls. I have my Bible. I haven't finished knowing everything in the Bible. Why? Why do I want to seek for knowledge so badly that my hunger for knowledge is past my desire for obedience to the God who owns knowledge? You have to check these things because this is how authority is stolen. So I said to you that there is no authority without purpose, there is no authority without a cause, and there is no authority that operates without agents of authority. As an agent of authority, remember, you have to understand that your authority is only as viable as your boundaries and your constraints. So even as an agent of authority, you are not the sovereign one. There is one who is sovereign, there is one who is God, there is one who is master, and at every point in time, you must be willing to cast your crown before him. You must be willing to cast your authority before him. So you see, a man loses control of his home and his family the moment the man forgets that there is a person who put the crown of leadership on my head. And if I'm unwilling to cast my crown before him as a man, I will run that family based on my own strength, my own sweat, and my own energy. And I will end up breaking the woman and the children that were given to me by the sovereign one. Because because the women and the children are configured to flourish under the ways and the cultures of the sovereign one, not under the ways and the cultures of my broken desires and humanity. So if I don't consistently as a man cast my crown before the sovereign one and allow him lay hands on my head and give me the inspiration on how to govern my home, what I will end up doing is that I will end up trying to build my home according to my strength and trying to make up for the weaknesses on the inside of me. And at the end of the day, I will raise a broken generation and I will raise a broken bride that I cannot present before God at the end of time. Is somebody still with me?
Because everyone must give account for what is given to them. To be a man is a gift and a grace given to you by God. You are going to give account for what you did with it, what you did with your bride, the same way Jesus will have to present his bride before God at the end of time. That's the same way a man will present his wife before God at the end of time. And you will say to Jesus what you did with your Ezra. How did you water your Ezra? How did you strengthen your Ezra? How did you bless your Ezra? Is there going to be judgment also for the bride? Absolutely. The same way the church will be judged by Jesus, but not unto death and unto condemnation, but unto reward and recognition. That's the same way the bride also will be measured by God, but the man will have to give account for his bride and for his sons. The same way Jesus is going to give account for his church and for his people. 